Hi guys, it's Mr. Pollock Biology here with another video about AS Level Unit 1. This time we're looking at membranes and transport again, more specifically how absorption occurs in the small intestine. Uh, this is what we're going to be looking at our objectives today. You're going to describe the adaptations that the small intestine has. You're going to understand this thing called co-transport and you're going to explain how transport mechanisms work together to ensure the maximum absorption of glucose occurs in the small intestine. So let's have a look at the small intestine and the adaptations that it has. Here's a cross section of the small intestine. Um, now what you can't see particularly well in this diagram is it has a really rich blood supply. And that movement of blood through the small intestine means there's going to be a constant favorable concentration gradient for all those nutrients that need to be absorbed. What you can see, however, on the diagram is these villi that, move, that project into the lumen, which massively increase the surface area. Now, if we look closely at those villi, we see they are f there are further projections on the surface, and these are called microvilli that serve to further increase the surface area. If we look inside the cells themselves, we notice that the epithelial cells have many mit mitochondria to provide ATP for active transport. So let's move on and look at this thing called core transport. And this is used to move one substance against a concentration gradient while another moves with a concentration gradient. Now effectively what happens is the one favorable concentration gradient causes the, the substance that's being moved against its concentration gradient to be dragged through. This requires a, a carrier protein. It's a passive process, that means no ATP is required. And a great example of this is the sodium glucose co-transporter, or the symporter. Or if you're looking at high level stuff, you can call it GLUT1 or GLUT2, depending. So let's have a look. We've got the lumen of the small intestine here at the top, and at the bottom we've got the inside of an epithelial cell. Let's put some bits and bobs in here. We've got glucose and we've got sodium inside the cell and also outside the cell. Notice the concentration gradients. We've got more glucose inside the cell than outside, and we've got more sodium outside the cell than inside the cell. So for this co-transport to work, sodium and glucose are going to bind together to the, uh, the co-transport. Now, because sodium is being dragged down its concentration gradient, that effectively forces the glucose through. That movement changes the tertiary structure of the protein, forcing the two molecules through together. This only works if both sodium and glucose is present. Another transport mechanism that you have to be aware of is a specific example of active transport called the sodium-potassium pump. And this actively pumps sodium in one direction whilst so uh, potassium is pumped in the other direction. This requires a carrier protein and again it's an active process. Now if we look at the opposite side of the epithelial cell where it meets the bloodstream, we see that inside the cell there is a high concentration of sodium and we bring in some potassium from the blood and we swap the locations of these ions actively. So there's sodium, there's potassium, and this requires ATP to change the tertiary structure of the transport protein which swaps their locations. The importance of this will become clear in a second. All mechanisms here work together to maximize the absorption of glucose. That's co-transport, the sodium potassium pump and facilitated diffusion. So here we have the lumen of the small intestine at the top, the inside of the epithelial cell in the middle and the bloodstream at the far side at the bottom. We've got some solutes in the cell and let's put some products of digestion in the lumen and some potassium in the bloodstream. We have core transport of glucose and sodium we have the active transport of potassium in and sodium out. And this serves to maintain a favorable concentration gradient of sodium so that core transport can continue. We've also got the facilitated diffusion of glucose going on into the bloodstream here as well. So one more time, we've got co-transport of sodium and glucose. We've got active transport switching sodium out and maintaining that concentration gradient for co-transport to continue and we've got facilitated diffusion of glucose into the bloodstream. So let's summarize this. Firstly, glucose is moved into the cells against a concentration gradient by core transport with sodium ions. The sodium potassium pump maintains a favorable sodium concentration to allow core transport to continue. Glucose is moved into the bloodstream by facilitated diffusion. 
And finally, a constant blood supply. A constant flow of blood maintains the concentration gradient throughout. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe.